Well, gang of Lane, Carolina Jackpot Time coming at you. It is Monday afternoon, January 8th, 2024. It also means it's National Championship Game Monday. Boy, the end of a long, winding road of a college football season. A fun college football season. Lots of good games. My team didn't do so great this year, but hey, the vast majority of you guys watching this thing, your teams didn't do that great either. So, uh, unless you're a Georgia fan, I guess. Look, um, this is going to be a really good game tonight. Uh, I'm also glad that these things are starting now. It's, it's coming on TV. I'm not exactly sure when the when the uh, opening kick is, but it's starting at seven thirty. Uh, remember when they were they started at like nine o'clock and they didn't have the kick until nine thirty, and the ship went over to like one thirty in the morning. That was brutal, and having to go to work the next day. I'm glad they quit doing that. They cut that out a couple of years ago. But uh, we've got two 14-0 conference champions matched up here in Michigan versus Washington. These two are going to be conference mates next year, which seems weird to say, doesn't it? I mean, this has been, I mean, th th this has been such a topsy-turvy, crazy college football season with so many outside stories, right? I mean, we started off with the Dingaling car wash, and then we, we had Mel Tucker and his whole his whole phone masturbation thing. Everybody forgot about that one already. Uh, we had uh, you know, Florida State desperately trying to get out of the ACC, can't get out of the ACC. Then we have Florida State at the end of the year, got cheated out of the playoffs. You know, we got Jim Harbaugh and his crazy stuff. We got the Connor Stallions um, sign-stealing uh, incident, which which is just absolutely nuts. And you know, he, he helped South Carolina beat Clemson. He helped them beat Tennessee, too. I'm not going to go into that bullshit here from this video. That's all that is. It's, it's a load of bullshit uh, perpetuated by a bunch of Tennessee fans who can't get over the fact that their team got their ass whipped. Uh, but I want to talk about this national championship game. This is going to be a really good game. I, I'm looking forward to this one, uh, and this is this is a strength on strength matchup. Uh, if I've ever seen one, look, I mean, you've got Michigan coming in here uh, with the number ten, uh, uh, no, excuse me, the number one ranked defense in the country. They're number one as far as defensively. They're also ranked number one. Washington's ranked number two. Washington has the number ten ranked offense in the country. But what really makes Washington's offense go is their passing game. With Michael Penix Jr., 35 TDs versus 9 interceptions this year. There are the number one pass offense in the country. Michigan is the number two pass defense. So, hey, where do we, where, what do we do with that, man? That is crazy. Michigan also has a very stout run defense. And a lot of people don't really notice or think about it, but Washington has a thousand yard rusher in Dylan Johnson, 1162 yards and 16 touchdowns. Blake Corum, the leading rusher for Michigan, has slightly less than Dylan Johnson, 1,111 uh, rushing yards, but he has 25 touchdowns. Uh, Donovan Edwards, who was, they were also kind of thought they were going to be like a one two punch. There, uh, Donovan Edwards, uh, you know, he's 393 yards rushing this year, three touchdowns. Now, I haven't totally kept up 100% with Michigan football. I don't know if he was hurt a little bit or what, but uh, he hasn't really produced um, any real uh, eye popping numbers there. Um, JJ McCarthy, 22 touchdowns, four interceptions. As a quarterback from Michigan, that's a little bit better, actually. Uh, of a touchdown to interception ratio than what Michael Penix has. A little bit, not much. Uh, of course, you know that Penix is going to throw the ball to a doomsday. He has uh, well over a thousand receiving yards this year, widely regarded uh, as the number one receiver in the country. Um, Michigan throws the ball, I like to spread it out a little bit there. Um, they're not as big a threat uh, to throw the ball around, but I think they're going to uh, do a little bit of that tonight. That's the one number that sticks out to me in this game. Washington has the number 123 pass defense in the country. That's rough. Uh, 123. Now, 
it played out of its mind in the first half of last Monday's playoff game against uh, the Texas Longhorns and Quinn Ewers. Uh, they, they were lights out in the first half. I mean, they were shutting down uh, everything that Quinn Ewers was trying to do. However, in the second half, uh, Michigan, uh, Texas uh, devised a little bit of a plan and um, th that Washington secondary got exposed a little bit and damn near ended up losing the ball game. Uh, they did win 37 to 31, but guys, my prediction for this is just that, look, we all know that defense wins championships. It's, a, it's an old saying, but it's proven true time and time and time again. Michigan, I think if you look at their victories and you look at their body of work this year, I just think it's been just a little bit more impressive than what Washington's done. You remember Washington kind of had that lull in the middle of the season after they won at Oregon. I believe that game went to overtime. They kind of had a little bit of a lull there where they, you know, they weren't real impressive, but they were still winning. Uh, you know, it took a last-second field goal to beat a not real good Washington State team. Uh, Michigan, you didn't see those kind of games from Michigan. Um, so that's why I, I'm looking at them. And I'm, I'm just thinking that Michigan is going to – they're going to get the ground game going enough to uh, open up that passing attack. And, and, and it's not even really an attack. I mean, they're just, they're really kind of average throwing the football, but they're methodical with it. And I think they're going to eat up some clock. I think they're going to mix in uh, the run and the pass pretty well together. And I think that Washington's going to have a tough time stopping them throwing the ball. So knowing that and, and, and defensively, uh, you know, Michigan's got some really good defensive backs. I think Washington's going to have a hard time uh, moving the ball through the air. Maybe not, a, not maybe a hard time. Maybe the wrong thing to say. They're going to have a more difficult time than what they normally do. Uh, they're not just going to be able to uh, have their way with Michigan the way they have some of the teams that they've played and what they've been used to and accustomed to. So I think Michigan's going to win the game tonight. Another factor we have there is this is likely Jim Harbaugh's last game as head coach of Michigan. There's been all kind of stuff coming out today. Uh, the Raiders are interested. Um, the Chargers are interested. I, I think he's going to make that move to the NFL ahead of uh, the punishments that he's going to personally receive, which I think is kind of, kind of shitty on his part because he's going to leave uh, Michigan – high and dry to accept the brunt of those punishments. Yeah, these are the guys that are going to be on probation. This game's probably going to end up getting stripped from them whenever the NCAA gets around to uh, dealing with it. But as for right now, they're still going to be national champions because I think they're going to win this ball game tonight. They are my pick to win the game. I'm actually going to be pulling for them. Why? Because I bet them. Uh, Carolina Cha-Ching Pot took Michigan to cover the spread. It's five points right now. I think Michigan's going to cover that spread. And I also like this game to go under the total of 56 points. Now, I just, because I just don't think that Washington is going to be able to throw the ball around with the prowess that they've been able to throw it around against uh, the other teams, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago. So, give me Michigan. Give me the under in this game. I still think it's going to be a really good game. I think we could see a, you know, I, 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 I think we could see one that really close to that. Maybe, maybe a 31-21 game, maybe a, maybe a 27-20 type game like we saw last week with uh, Michigan and Alabama. But uh, I think Washington is going to get held below their season average points, yards, and production, and uh, I think that. Jim Harbaugh is going to go out on top. His players are going to play hard for him. Look, these players love this guy. Uh, they absolutely love them. Some Jim Harbaugh. I mean, I don't know what it is. It's like a, you know, everybody says Dabo has a cult up there at Clemson. This is a cult. It's weird. 
because Jim Harbaugh is a weird guy. I mean, he says weird, quirky things. I mean, it, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me to see him just start start quacking like a duck in an interview or something. I mean, he's very, uh, he almost reminds me of a weirdo like Dan Mullen, except he wins at a higher level. I kind of compared him to last night. I said he's like Shane Beamer, except uh, he wins football games. He's really not like Shane Beamer. Shane Beamer's more of like the... Shane Beamer's like more of the weird, douchey guy who, uh, you know, would be like picking his nose in the corner of uh, the class in school, as uh, one Uncle Lou said. While Jim Harbaugh is, is probably was more of the weird guy, and I know he was a jock, and high school. I know he, he played football at Michigan, but just hear me out. Just from looking at the individual that you see now, he's more of the douchey character like you would expect to see like wearing all black and a trench coat in high school and, and sitting by himself at lunch in, in the corner out in the courtyard somewhere reading some just really weird, obscure book like called I'm in Urgent Need of Advice. I don't know. They're both weird, but he's he's a little bit more odd. But they love him. Uh, these guys will absolutely run through a wall for this guy. And so that coaching staff. I mean, did you not see that coach, that Sharon Moore uh, character after they uh, beat Penn State on the road? I mean, the, you know, you know, Harbaugh was suspended for that. I mean, he was just crying over here, giving his interview. Everybody made fun of Shane Beamer for crying after the uh, Clemson game. Well, he cried because they lost. He cried because we sucked. I mean, at least this guy was crying because they won. Uh, he was crying, saying, "This was for this was for you, Coach." And uh, you know, I think they really, really, uh, they really love each other there. And, and like I said, it is a cult because they're weird. But I still think they get the job done tonight, despite all. Anyway, I'll you guys let me know in the comment section what you think uh, about tonight's game. Hell, I may live stream this thing too. For the hell of it, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. Uh, you'll know if it pops on there. You just kind of check with Carolina Jackpots and see if you uh, see where Carolina Jackpot goes live. You can decide whether you're going to get on it or not. I mean, it really doesn't matter. I, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. Um, so many people are going to be live streaming this game tonight. That just kind of. I don't know. Kind of cuts out the fun, the originality of it for me. I like to kind of have a, a monopoly on those things if I want to do one. So, anyway, it's just how I am. Just weird. Anyway, I'll see you guys later on. I appreciate you. Peace. I'm out of here still. Go Gamecocks. Go Coach Beamer tonight. Go Big Blue.